Today I asked the fragrance community to tell me about their most complimented winter fragrances and we're going to talk about designer niche, women's and men's. If you want to get some ideas for your winter list, let's go. I ask you on Instagram as usually little question. You've been a lot to answer, so thank you if you've been part of it. If you want to be part of the next one, I do that quite often. You can just go on my Instagram, Clement CC Fragrance, and uh, just stay tuned. Little disclaimer before I did some category men, women, designer, and niche just to make it more clear. If you like me and you wear whatever you like, whether it's masculine, retailed or feminine, then watch it all. Voila! I'm pretty excited because there's some results that I was not expecting. And also remember that this is the fragrance community talking here. The people that follows me that knows about niche fragrance. So it's not always popular release that is that are in the top surprisingly and that's why I love doing that. It's a little bit long to do to be honest because I had to write all your votes. And it takes some time. Right, let's start by the women, shall we? Designer for women, I've seen a lot of fragrances that I was not uh, expecting to see, but actually had a few votes, including, for example, MAC Velvet Teddy. This is discontinued, guys, but I remember the MAC fragrance. I, I really enjoyed them. Uh, Soir de Lune, Black Opium, Dior Addict, La Belle from Jean-Paul Gaultier, but this is the top three. Number three is Cristal Noir from Versace. Versace. <laughs> I hear so many people say Versace. I'm like, is it Italian? Versace. <laughs> I'm not Italian, so if you're Italian, tell me if it's correct because I don't want to butcher your language. This little alien of a bottle, to be honest, because usually Versace is definitely not of one of my favorite designer brands. I think their fragrance sometimes, most of the time actually, are very overly synthetic, but in a bad way. <laughs> Oops. Uh, this is the only one that I would say that I will pick for, for me. It always made me laugh, to be honest, because it really looks like a huge alien. You got this, which is quite small, and then you got this huge topper, and it looks like a alien head a bit. I find it quite funny, but <laughs> warm and spicy fragrance, but mainly is white flower, is full of gardenia. So it's not the most mind blowing fragrance to you smell. But what I would say with this one, the type of character it has is very fun. It's flirty in my opinion, very not sensual because I think it's a little less classy than that. Sassy. You know, actually, I've got a, a girlfriend. She it's a signature fragrance and she's the, uh, the definition of a sassy person. <laughs> and it really suits her so much. Right, I've got the Eau de Toilette, but you've got also the Eau de Parfum that has a little bit more coconutty vibe, as I remember. The opening, you, you smell some pepper, so it gives like some nice spice, and I do enjoy it. So it's a floral fragrance with a little bit of a twist. Number two is Hypnotic Poison by Dior. I don't know why I said Dior. Dior. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I am not really a big fan of Dior, to be honest. It's always up and down for me. But I have to say, this is one of the ladies' fragrance that I particularly appreciate because it's very warm for me. It's sensual, it's very classy, but at the same time, it's when you want to play the sexy card, when you want like a, a, a designer that you know is going to work and that is kind of a must-have, more enveloping. A huge vanilla scent, really. You have a bit that uh, warm, slightly coconutty vibe as well that makes it more sweeter, rounder to me, even though it is not listed. Almondi, you want, it's very addictive. It's one of the fragrances in Dior that has the most personality and character to me. I really like it. It's bold and we love this. And of course, it's absolutely iconic. It's a classic. Top one most complimented fragrance for women in winter is Alien Thierry Mugler, which I have to say is one of my favorite designers as well. I think Thierry Mugler, it's not for everyone because it can be a bit cloying for some people. It can be a bit intense. This is a huge flower scent as well, but it does have this smell that is very particular. You never smell something like this before. You really need to smell it. My explanation are not going to be very useful to you. The most projecting and the most, in the most intense scent. If you're fishing for compliment, you have to step up the game uh, in terms of projection. And that's why everyone talks about that. Everyone wants projection. Personally, it's not the first thing why I buy a fragrance, but if definitely I'm going... Uh, 
out with some people and I am fishing for compliments. And I don't think we should be ashamed to fish for compliments. It just feels good. You spend some money in your fragrance. I'm not upset if I don't get compliments because I buy fragrance personally for me, but uh, the compliment is a bonus. So yeah, most complimented designer for men. Uh, for winter, there was not as much vote for uh, the men section this time, which is very strange because usually I see a, an army of Dior Intense. Yeah, there was just one vote for uh, Dior Intense. Uh, funny. <laughs> so number three is a luxury fragrance. It's still a designer, but it's more luxury. Also, it's a unisex fragrance. As I've seen more men talking about it, I'm putting it here. Coromandel Chanel. I have to say, I've worked for Chanel during many years and uh, Coromandel always been, it was not my favorite, but it was the one I was recommended the most. It's the one that everybody loves. The full patchouli scent is very warm, very intense, mysterious, charming. And no, there's no wood in Coromandel. I'm saying that because you can't imagine how many clients during my masterclass were like, oh, it's the wood fragrance. And I'm like, no. I go to Fragrantica to check Chanel fragrances, their composition, and I'm scared to death. <laughs> For Chanel fragrance, I don't understand what what's happening. Ingredients are usually totally wrong. <laughs> Coromandel is a huge ambery fragrance, which is full of frankincense and benzoin. Every time I go to Fragrantica to see the noise, okay, I've got this in front of me, bitter orange, Patchouli, alors patchouli, yes, hein, there's a lot of patchouli, it makes it like very thick. Oris root, rose, jasmine, white chocolate, uh, benzoin, amber, olibanan, incense, and those ones are really at the end, which are the ones that should be at the front. This is done by the feeling of people that smell it, so it's not wrong, but um, for me, when I see that, it's like I rediscover the fragrance again because uh, that's, that's not. Uh, that's not what yet. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it's amazing. It's very sexy. I highly recommend it. So I'm glad to see you here. Number two is Jean-Paul Gaultier, Le Mal Parfum. I am not surprised to see it here. I think it's a great winter scent. It's easy as well. It's very easy. You know, when you talk about Le Mal Classic, you see something that is spicy, but also a little bit androgyn. For me, in this one, it's less about that. It, and it's more like a little bit more generic, I have to say, with the overdose of Tom Cabin Vanilla X smell. And for me, it feels a bit more generic than the classic Le Mal. But uh, it's very enveloping. I, I really like it, even though it's really simple. I really like it. A lot of people are screaming about this, this, um, this fragrance just for the reason I'm telling you. But uh, for me, it was a huge hit. Do I love it? Do I find it very uh, comforting on men? Yes. Like, I don't really particularly find it sexy. For me, it's like the comfort that it brings. I really like it. One is Noir Extreme Parfum from Tom Ford. <laughs> Tom Ford, you know, if you watched my video recently, you know that Tom Ford, like it's a bit just for the price range. But this one is not part of the exclusive range, which is called the private blend. It's the signature collection, which is more affordable. It's still quite expensive to buy a Tom Ford, but no extreme parfum, I think, compared to its price. It's all right. It's all right. I'm, I'm screaming for the private blend, really, because I think it's horrendous. But I really like no extreme. I feel that it's a great gourmand for men. It's spicy with a huge amount of cardamom and I actually really like that. Gourmand, maybe a bit sweet, accord. For me, it's killer on men. I, I love it. I know some men know a bit like, mm, I don't want to smell feminine. And I'm not saying that uh, because I'm inventing. I get a lot of comments asking questions like this. Yeah, uh, I get it. Like it's, it's quite a huge step. It's a huge gourmand. But honestly, wow, like I absolutely love that, love that on men. Uh, so yeah, and I'm surprised to see that is really complimented. Complimented winter fragrances, but niche category now. So I did a top five for this one because I, I am telling you, the whole of the votes were niche fragrances 
en lit. Number five, it's a tie because there's two fragrances. Silky Wood from Goldfield and Banks. This is a fragrance I want to add in my collection, by the way. I think this, this very... Uh, uh, huge um, enveloping woody fragrance. I really like that. I think for me it's a great daytime fragrance. It's a powdery vanilla but I love the, the, the slightly leverage sweet deco that makes it for me very sophisticated. A hint of tobacco. I really feel that the fragrance also is very realistic. It smells quite natural and I do really like that. If you're not too keen on slightly leverage and that's not for you but for me it's a great scent. Not too unique neither. It's really a popular release. And then there was another name that came in number five, fifth position. I don't know what it is and I'm going to check it now with you which is Cruz del Sur. Ah, it's Serge. Oh, I don't know if it's one or two. I think I've seen only, let me double check. One. It's a leather amber with rum, dried fruit. Ah, okay, okay, I can see. Like anything boozy for me does works with grapes. Does it smell a bit like wine? Mmm. Cloves, cumin, it's castorium. I hope it's not really one. Uh, let me know in the comment if you have tried this. I am not sure what it is about. <laughs> uh, what is the Cruz del Sur 2? Cruz del Sur 2 is a fruity, tropical and sweet. Uh, that's better rating, but it doesn't mean anything to me. Mango, guava, pineapple, milk. Mm, this is more appealing to me. <laughs> so, I don't know, guys. Let me know what you think about this. I'm going to order myself some samples or go directly to try with Serge. Uh, yeah. Four. And this is, this is uh, like a huge surprise to me. One of my favorites. So I'm really happy. It's Remember Me by Jovoy. And you cannot tell that I influenced my community because this I actually don't really talk about it that often a chai latte fragrance if you ever drink a chai latte this is how it smells you're gonna be very happy with it if you love those things it can be quite heady even when you drink the chai latte it can be you know kind of like oh it's a bit too much quite thick and the big difference is those solar notes given by frangipani flower and it feels a bit tropical or oh, nearly a bit sunscreen kind of flower and I absolutely love this mm. can I be frankly honest here I am actually surprised to see it here because it didn't really drive me compliments uh, the last time I, I wore it my boyfriend was like oh, what do you wear it's pretty pretty strange and I was like what you what you are a what are you talking about <laughs> strange one of my top Jovoy fragrance. You need to try this fragrance. It's, it's such, such a particular fragrance. Number three is Gris Charnel BDK. Uh, we start to go to the huge popular niche fragrance, to be honest. Uh, what do you think about Gris Charnel? I really like it. Silky, woody scent, bit of a cashmere vibe. I personally love to wear that on a daytime when it's cold because it's slightly enveloping, but it's not intoxicating. A Parisian class, like, you know, like uh, Parisian. Uh, they <laughs> I was born in Paris, but I don't include myself. <laughs> I, I left the country. I'm not Parisian anymore. I'm not a less is more person, so I don't include myself. But yeah, when you see like Parisian fashion, like they wear something ultra simple and make it very sophisticated. That's what Gris Chanel feels to me. It feels like a white or shirt, nice nails, uh, hair that are not overdone, <laughs> not too much makeup, basically the contrary of me, guys. <laughs> oui, oui, baguette. If you don't have the budget to get some niche fragrance, uh, I highly recommend you... Oops. Uh... Where is it? Get yourself this. This is the Bédéca Gris Charnel, but the Hermes is something that drove me the most compliment right this year. A Hermes. I wore this with anything. <laughs> anything that left me the most beautiful sillage in the world. And it smells exactly like the fragrance. Who is Grand Soir? Maison Francis Cardigan. Uh... Uh, no, I love it. Huh? 
okay? It's one of my favorite. I love it. An amber that is very easy to wear. Very simple, but it's perfection. If you're expecting uniqueness, no. It's an amber done to a level of perfection that is 10 over 10. Voila, it's so beautiful. It does have a little bit of woody undertone to me, so ladies, bear that in mind if you try. But I have to say, every time I wear it, I feel so confident. That being said, I'm a bit bored to see it in all the top niche. <laughs> right, it's again a scent that I've seen again and again. Angel Cher. Kilian, uh, this fragrance has, since its launch, has every praise. Everyone loves it. Uh, of course, some people hate it because they don't want to love the same fragrance as everyone. But in reality, what is it? It's a boozy fragrance that is super round, vanilla-like, uh, that goes so well on everyone. Is it amazing? Yes, I do think so. I really like it. I was disappointed at the start because I was expecting something more unique. But the reality is that it's timeless and I think it's going to be a huge hit for so many years now. Uh, I think I'm getting just a bit bored to see it so much. It's very popular. What do you expect? And to tell you how much popular it is, uh, between number one and number two, there's actually like... 20 votes so <laughs> everyone vote for this so, uh, general overview i've seen this time this time when i i think when i talk about a very specific subject uh, i see much more niche fragrances i see a lot of unique scents that i don't usually see it's not just popular release shagaf oud swiss arabian uh, lune feline alfetti aventus oh, yeah, bon. Noir Extreme, Musque Noble, Estée Lauder, Wood Mystic, Harren Terence Young, Onyx, euh, Ilaque, Reflet sur la Cavengo, euh, Soir d'Orient, Vanera, Laboratorio Olfativo, Baby Cat, Kayali, Pink Diamond, Hermès, Bel Ami, Anike 5, Pardon, Nasomato. If you want to draw compliments, you need to be confident in the scent you're wearing. And it's all about the attitude at the end, not really about what you wear. And usually I see much more designer. And the designer that I've seen were not new release. It was only classics. Only classics. I didn't see anything that was launched this year or the year before. To finish nicely and chill this video, I'm going to read you some comments that I find could inspire you. Parfum de Barley Pegasus, even though I couldn't like it. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Tom Ford's Elaine Edge, my favorite perfume in general, would bath in it. Same, actually, I really love this. Majestic Jardin, for me, Majestic Jardin, as per your recommendation, is still one of my most complimented scent. And don't worry, I will do video about this, and I did many videos about my complimented scent, by the way, if you ask what are mine. Uh, but yeah, this is definitely one of mine. Majestic Jardin is a bomb. Cherry Narguilé fragrance, it's amazing, very powdery, I love it. Hard says Alfetti, but realistically Ad Aventus, unfortunately, no! Vanilla Idesia, this is Electimus, it's new, but it has stolen the crown. My wife loved this in the air. Black Oplum, an oldie, but never disappoint. That's all what this is about. Ariana Cloud 2.0, every time it's a compliment. Right, we are done today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. For me, I really love it because, again, it gets me out of my comfort zone. We talk about you rather than me. Let me know what are your most complimented fragrance for winter or the, just the one that you feel the most comfortable with. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're new here. If you don't do it and watching me, what am I for you? A uh, one night stand? <laughs> If you leave a comment and you press the button like, this is a huge help for the channel. You directly support it. For the people that super thanks as well, you guys are my heart, my soul. <laughs> You're my heart. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, uh, I need to stop now. See you very soon. Bye now.